the basic idea of what we're looking at so far is that if you are above divergent, what does that mean? You are also divergent, right? If you are below convergence, what are you? You are convergent. And that, the first thing, is how we, this is how we prove the harmonic series was divergent. It was above something that we knew diverged, right? So what we're going to do now is look at something similar, something very, very similar. We're going to have something called the integral test, and it looks like this looks all notation heavy but it's actually pretty straightforward so we're gonna have a sequence a n that we're gonna call f of n right here so here's our sequence what's going on here we're changing it to what is this this is what kind of integral is that improper if the improper integral where you're basically replacing the function with the notation for each individual entry of the sequence is convergent, then the series is convergent. If it's divergent, then the sequence is divergent. It's actually pretty cool. This is a little bit more powerful uh, than you think it is, but it's, it's pretty neat. This is what the picture looks like, or this is what a picture looks like that you can try to understand what's going on here. Great, great picture here. So here is a series. It's similar to the harmonic series. Instead of adding up 1 and then 1 half, what are you adding up? 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared. To, if you write that in some notation, there it is. Here's the thing. This distance right here represents 1 over 1 squared. What does this represent right here, that distance? 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 3 squared, 1 over 4 squared, 1 over 5 squared, oh sorry, 1 over 5 squared is all the way over where? <laughs> over here. So here's the thing. We're not quite sure. We're not quite sure what the area is. So we're not quite sure if this converges or diverges. We want to add up this distance plus this distance plus this distance plus this distance plus this distance. But what did I say before? If we find something definitely larger than this converges, then this series must what? Converge. Then this series must converge exactly so instead of looking at this sum do you agree with this this sum right here to infinity of 1 over n squared so it's 1 1 over 1 plus 1 1 over 1 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared this right here is got to be less than the integral from 1 to infinity not 8 <laughs> it's a very different number 1 to infinity of what 1 over x squared it better be, right? And here's the thing. Can you integrate this thing? Whoa. Can you integrate that? Yes, you can. What is that going to be? That's the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral of 1 to n of 1 over 1 over x squared dx, right? What's the integral of 1 over x squared? the integral <laughs> negative x to the what and we're going from what to what do you agree with that so yes it's equal to negative 1 over x from 1 to n so what's that going to be what is that negative 1 over what n minus what negative 1 over over 1 is that correct? And we're looking at what's the limit as n goes to infinity of this. What is that equal to? 1 minus, so what is it? It's 1, right? Correct? We plug in, it's 1 minus, yeah. So here's the thing. We prove that this thing is equal to 1. So therefore, does this converge or diverge? It must converge because it's less than it's less than 1. We don't know what it converges to, but does it have to converge? Yes. Yes. We know when we add them all up, the maximum thing it possibly can be is 1, right? So does this kind of make a little bit of logical sense? What integral are you guys trying to do? The integral from? Of what? Yeah, what, yeah it doesn't really matter what you call it. What is that? the limit 
as n goes to infinity of 1 to n. Got it. So now you have to integrate 1 over x squared plus 1. What is that? <laughs> Come on. What is it? Tan inverse. Ooh. From what to what? 1 to n. Yeah? Yeah? Is that good? Yes. Does that help you out? Okay, can you tell me what you're evaluating here? It's the limit as n goes to infinity of tan inverse of n minus tan inverse of 1. What is, ta what is tan inverse as of n as n goes to infinity? Pi over 2. Yep. Oh, yeah, you can't see it. I'm sorry. Pi over 2. And what's tan inverse, what's tan inverse of 1? Pi over what? Pi over 4? So what do you think this equals? Mm. So the integral exists. So therefore, is this convergent or divergent? Convergent. We haven't gone over it, but we verified it is convergent. So we're done at this point. OK, one last thing I just want to point out, and this is important. I meant to circle up here uh, instead of doing that side. This is 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 squared. This rectangle is 1 over 2 squared. This rectangle is 1 over 3 squared. I was mixing units here if I just highlighted one side. The point is, instead of integrating from 1 to infinity, what should I have integrated on this one? It's 0 to infinity on this one. And what's nice about it, it's 0 to infinity, that doesn't really change a heck of a lot on this. Um, the challenge, though, is if you change this to 0, if I change that to 0, what happens? Yeah, this changes right there, right? And can you end, can you end up being able to plug it in? You can't really plug it in, right? Um, the question, therefore, is uh, uh, what is 1 over, <laughs> what are, what's 1 over 1 squared? 1. So you know that you can just eliminate all of this because you know that the actual value is 1. And then it's going to be the actual error. You still know that the sum. 1 to infinity like this of 1 over n squared is going to be less than 1 plus the integral of 1 to n of 1 over n squared. Uh, one to, yeah, 1 to, uh, one, to uh, 1 to infinity. I'll just do it like this. Uh, x squared dx. The point is... Yeah, you have, to be, you have to be a little careful, but here's the thing. It's not going to come up with that much because we're just going to start our things at 1 and go forward from there. That's totally fine because you can always cut it out. Constant anyway. As long as if it, the first one's a constant, you know everything else converges. A co convergent plus a constant means convergent. So that's where the final rule comes from right here, where you can just go from 1 to infinity uh, because the first term will be a constant right here. All of them are going from 1 to infinity. Yeah, when is this convergent? Well, we know, as we've been told, this is convergent when what has to be convert when what has to exist. If this is the series, which integral is going to have to actually be? Well, I'm not asking you for the answer. I'm saying, okay, this right here is our series. So, what integral by this first by the first statement we got at the beginning of class from one to infinity of one over x to yeah, you can say x to the p dx has to exist, right? Needs to exist. So when do we know that that's going to exist? When what? When p is greater than 1. When p is greater than 1, exactly. So therefore, it's going to converge when? And it's going to diverge when? Yes. So it will know. OK. So. Determine whether the series converges or diverges. What's the first most important thing about a series that it has to do in order to converge? Each term has to get smaller. That's the first most. That's the first thing you have to check, right? Is it, it, has, it has to get bigger. correct? But the first thing, even before that, is it has to get smaller, right? If it doesn't get smaller, does it converge? No. So the first thing you want to check is to see if it actually gets smaller, right? 
How can we check to see if something is getting smaller? The slope. No, well, you know, always, always. I understand that gives you a strong idea, but always getting smaller. So we need to look at not. What's a better way to say the slope? Take the look at the derivative. So if a n is equal to l n n over n, what's going to be a n prime? What do you have to use? Quotient rule. Low d high minus high d all over low squared. So what's that going to be? One minus all over n squared. So we now know a n prime is equal to this thing. Does that help us out at all? What do we think? Does this help? We're looking at, no, well, hold on. <laughs> We're trying to find, is this always, it should always be decreasing, right? So theoretically, true. This one does? Yeah. We sure? I got I see what you're saying. Go for it. You're saying it nicely. So this thing is always what? It's always positive. Okay, the top oh, element. You're all saying a great thing, so I'm just trying to get you to say them all at different times, okay? So yes, always positive. And so you know that one minus ln this is positive greater than zero when what is true? When n is greater than? Absolutely. I understand what you're saying. I just wanted to say like piece by piece by piece. Okay. See if it goes to zero. Do we believe it goes to zero? The limit as n goes to infinity of uh, ln n over n. Well, they both go to infinity on the top and bottom. So what can we use? Yay, L'Hopital. So what do you end up with? The limit as n goes to infinity of over one. So what's that going to go to? It's going to go to zero. It's going to go to zero. So it's decreasing and it goes to zero. Yay! So it's we haven't violated any of the problems that would immediately tell us it's divergent. Correct? OK. So what are we going to do with this thing? We are going to do the I which integral? The integral of 1 to infinity of ln n over, or we like to call it what? ln over x dx. That's what we want to try to do right now. Can someone tell me what it integrates to? It's the limit as n goes to infinity of what? Natural log of x what? Squared over 2. Right? Is that kind of? Yeah, exactly. And we're evaluating from 1 to 1 to infinity. Yay. Wonderful. Oh, it's well, actually, no. It's 1 to n. Say it like that, because we, we put it out front already. Yeah. So what happens when we actually do this out now? You get ln, you get you get ln of n squared over two, minus what's ln of one? Zero, and it's the limit as n goes to. Limit as n goes to infinity, and what's that going to be? Yeah. So what's it? Yeah. So made even bigger. So it's going to be this. So what do we now know? Divergent. Divergent. Correct. Right here, this thing right here right there. And we know the only thing we're cutting off is finite. Finite plus finite is going to be finite. So it's therefore going to be convergent. Right, exactly. So we're looking at the part that could blow up and showing that the part that could blow up is not going to. So it doesn't matter what the other part is. Does that because that we already we already established that it's constant so therefore it's not going anywhere. So look what he did. I like how it's nice and big, which is good. This first rectangle right here, this one right here, what does that represent? I circled it. It's hard to see. That is a 2 because it's the distance. It's This distance is 1 from 1 to 2, right? It's 1, but what's the height of this thing? That's the proper height you're looking for, right? So the area of that re that rectangle right there is a 2. So that's why you're summing it from 2 to infinity here, but then the integral you want to take from 1 to infinity. You want to take from 1 to infinity. Okay, so another way we could have thought about this, and it seems like it might be helpful, but it's not, but it'll help us understand why the divergence half of this works, is instead of going from 
the right and then go f taking this and going left from here. Let's say we drew the rectangles differently. Let's say we drew them like this. You see what I'm doing there? So in this case, this right here, what's the height of that? One. And what's the width of that? One. So in this case, when we did going to the left, that was a one. But now where's a one? We just shifted it over like that, correct? All we did was shift it one to the right. Now here's the thing. These rectangles that I now drew, are they above or below the actual value? They're above, right? So here's the thing. If we proved, if we proved, um, if they're above and we proved that it converges, does that help us? Not really. If you're above something that converges, you might converge or you might diverge. But if you know you're above and the integral diverges, then it's going to definitely diverge, right? So the one example, the classic example that they actually go through in the book is they look at this. They look at the summation of n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n, like this. And this is how we could use the integral test to show that this thing, what do we think this does? This diverges. And the reason it diverges, if we graph this thing out, 1 over the square root of n, it's still a curve that goes down like this, right? Is it decreasing? Yes. Does it go to 0? Yes. But does that, make, does that mean it's definitely going to, is, does that mean that this series is definitely going to converge? Not necessarily. It might, but we don't know that. So what we can do is think about it like this. Let's start at 1, then we go to 2, and then we go to 3, like this, okay? And we draw our rectangles. Here are our rectangles. Now, this right here is always what? Always above. So what this tells us is that the summation of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n is going to be what? Greater than or, well actually it's going to be greater than, you can just say greater than, it's definitely going to be equal, is going to be greater than the integral from 1 to infinity of what? 1 over the square root of x, do you agree with that? It has to be greater, right? But what do we know for a fact? 1 to infinity of x to the what power? In this case, what kind of, what is that? What do we know about this? <laughs> well, hold on, no, don't overthink it. This right here, what do we know about that? It diverges. Why do we know that that diverges? Tell me, it's a simple. Yeah, we proved it, but specifically, what's, what do we identify in there? What's the key thing that tells us it diverges? We know that P, we know that the 1 half, 1 half is less than 1, so therefore this thing is going to diverge. We already fi Remember we figured that out before? So because we know it's greater than something that diverges, this must what? That must diverge. We know it's greater than something that diverges, so it has to diverge. Let's go back to what do we say first today? If it's above a divergent, it's going to diverge. If it's below convergent, it's going to? When you mix and match, be careful.